don't be cheap. I'm buying your first bulldog. If you're thinking about breeding bulldogs, don't be cheap. I don't want to offend anybody. I might offend some people. If you're getting into breeding bulldogs, you want to breed bulldogs, and you're not already financially stable, it's not for you. Um, this is not a hustle. This is not a quick flip. This is not a quick come up. This is nothing like that. Breeding bulldogs is a lifestyle. It costs a lot of money, and it takes a lot of time, and it takes a lot of energy, and it takes a lot of passion. And if you don't love these dogs, it's not for you. I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm not trying to crush anybody's dreams. But if you can barely afford your first dog, don't buy it. Don't buy it. Like, that's a huge no-no. If you can barely afford it, don't buy it. There's so many other fees that are going to come into play when producing bulldogs in an ethical and reputable way that you're already setting yourself up for failure. Not to mention you're probably not buying the dog you really want because it's not in your budget. So number one biggest mistake you can make, buying a subpar average female for your first dog or any dog when you're breeding but especially your first dog, your first foundation female, everything is gonna branch off of that girl because you're gonna be wanting to keep keepers off of her, keepers off of that one, and so on. So everything is gonna have that girl's pet in it. So your foundation female is everything. So buying a subpar or average female is the biggest mistake you can make. You've already set yourself up for failure for the entire rest of your breeding career. A lot of different style Frenchies, um, a lot of different, different DNA, color, hair types, Find the style you like with the program that you like and then reach out to that breeder. See if they're willing to mentor you if you buy a full rights fee. You really want to take it up a notch. The real power move to do getting into this game is buying a keeper female off a breeder you respect or like, off a program you like. Buy someone's keeper female. If it ain't for sale, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's not for sale. I've bought dogs that aren't for sale. Birkin over here, she wasn't for sale when I bought her. She was the breeder's keeper but I had to have her. I kept offering more money, more money, more money. Eventually he shot me a number. He said, if you do this, she's yours. I bought her. That's, she was the beginning of my mini English Bulldog program. That's the way you should get into this game. You wanna buy someone else's keeper for many different reasons. The biggest reason is you don't know what you're looking at. I thought I knew what I was looking at one year in, two year in, three year in. It's, you might not be able to grasp this. I probably couldn't then either, but it takes time to really learn how to read a dog, to really know what attributes to look at, what features to look at, and then the way they're gonna look over time. So how to read an eight month, a six month, or eight week puppy, a three month puppy, a six month puppy, a one year old dog, a year and a half old dog. There's different ways you have to look at each one of those dogs and for different features and you don't you won't you won't know that you won't know how to properly even look at a dog for years so trust in that breeder if he was going to keep her he knows something he knows something spend the money spend the money even if you overpaid there's no overpaying there's no overpaying when buying when buying a breeder's keeper or when really buying a special dog if you really find a special dog that is what you want it's exactly what you want with the lines of what you want Buy that dog. There's no losing. Everything's going to come off of that dog, so it'll all get proportioned out. That is, and you're not overpaying. You're paying for exactly what you want from generation, generation, generation forward that you're going to produce with that dog. So if you just can't afford that really badass dog that you like, chill out. It's not, it's just chill. Just chill. The, the, the breeding game is a long run anyways. It's not a short game. If you're in this fast money, I want an adult eight months and up, blah, 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 adult female. I want a dog in heat. Bro. Just stop. Just stop. Your, your mind's already in the wrong spot. This isn't for you. You read the dog game wrong. Just back out. Don't back it up. Back it up. Okay. All you gonna do is just, we, we, we just back it up, okay? That's it. Back it up. That's right. Back it up. Do it. You gotta love these dogs. You gotta know it's a slow roll, and you gotta know it's gonna be a complete lifestyle change for you. So if you can't afford that dog yet, it's all good. Get your money up. Get your money up. You might in, in that time you're probably gonna find a better dog or a different dog that you like better possibly. So don't rush it. Really, 
I don't want to crush anybody's dreams, but if that's what it takes, some of you guys might need your dreams crushed a little bit. And just, you know what, maybe breeding is a lot bigger of a step than I thought. Um, and you might want to chill. Or some of y'all, I hope this just makes you really like, okay, okay, and really just zone in. And um, if you really have that passion, you're going to zone Hiring in. a whelper. If you're hiring a whelper for your pups, we go back to your head's not in it. Your passion's not in it. You don't realize this is a lifestyle. So you already have the wrong outlook now for most of y'all. So if you were already in the mindset of get, being a whelp or hiring a whelper, again, I ask you to probably just back out of this. It's just not for you. That's, that's not as, that is not the way you need to be able to raise your own dogs, produce your own puppies, care for your own puppies. You need to be able to have the knowledge of these puppies to give your knowledge when you sell your puppies. They're purebred dogs, they go for a high price not just because of the dog, but because of the knowledge that comes with the breeder that sells you the dog. If you don't have that knowledge, then you don't deserve that money. And it seems like you're in this for money anyways if you don't even want to take care of the dogs. So I'm telling you, this isn't for you. Save your time, bro. Save your money. I'm saving you money right now. I'm saving you money. Um, you got to know how to take care of these dogs yourself, not by hiring a whelper. You, you learn it. You, you figure it out. You do your due diligence. You do your research first. You get prepared, and hopefully you get a mentor. You buy a full rights female off a breeder who's willing to mentor you. I give mentorship on any of my full rights females, so reach out to me, BigBoneBulldogs.com. My main IG is down right now, so please go follow my backup and run that up, BigBoneBulldogs underscore DB. My website, BigBoneBulldogs.com. TikTok, my, my TikTok's jamming, y'all. Big Bone Bulldogs on TikTok, my backup TikTok, the Bulldog Breeder. Let's get back to that. Next biggest mistake is hiring a whelper. Don't do it. Your head's in the wrong place. You need to know how to take care of these dogs. You need to be able to learn this from the ground up. And if you're not willing to learn it from the ground up, it's not for you. This is a lifestyle. Another biggest mistake. I hear this one all the time. You guys buy a boy first. That boy's a pet. That boy's a pet. Um, you bought it as a pet. And nothing changed since you bought it. He's not all of a sudden a stud that somebody's going to come to you to pay all this money for. There's plenty of proven studs out there. Your dog is not a stud. Um, a st only a small percentage of Frenchie, of bulldogs, of any breed or whatever, only a small percentage of the males in every breed are actual stud quality dogs that should be producing. This isn't just let's mass produce things to make money here. We're trying to better the breed. We're breeding to better the breed. So we're breeding out the bad attributes, bad characteristics, and we're breeding in the ones that we like. So unless you spent a whole lot of money off a, a trusted program, um, a respected program, and you're jumping the game that way if you'd like, but I wouldn't recommend it. You're just some guy who all of a sudden has bought a really expensive dog off some big camp, and now we're all just supposed to use you for stud service like again you don't even have any knowledge like there's things with the stud service that have you have to be knowledgeable you have to know how to pull your like there's more to just pulling your dog um are you always going to have teasers ready for your dog or do you know how to um do you know how to add extender and ship it out do you know how to do ais that you can um that you can provide for your for your customers for your clients and do you just do you have a reputation like um so I just I wouldn't ever recommend getting a male. Don't ever start with a male. You start with a female. So another biggest mistake you can make is buying a male first or anytime soon. I recommend buying a female. You've just been proven proven studs, and hopefully eventually you hit the jackpot and you produce a, a true stud quality dog. But don't just use a proven fee, a proven male. Oh, I'm gonna go breed to this big name dog and I'm keeping a boy. How? Do you, what do you mean you're keeping a boy? You haven't even seen your puppies. You don't even know what you're about to get. Breeding is a roulette. It is a crapshoot. Breeding is not... It, it, you can match up two badass dogs and get a fluke litter. A lot it happens a lot. Drop My people that know, drop that in the comments. Let them know. My breeders out there, let them know. That shit can happen. You can breed two badass dogs and have some fluke. And sometimes you have a, a ugly dog who's a producer. Um, and it just regardless. It's You don't know what you're going to get yet. Oh, I'm going to keep a male. You don't know what that male is going to be. Keep your eye on them. Hopefully you do produce a good one. But I'm telling you, a lot of times it don't work out that way. And you can't just keep them because you like him. Well, you can do whatever you want. I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend 
continue to use studs that have the exact look, DNA, pedigree, health, temperament that you like, and until you really outprove yourself and you really produce something for a little bit, now you can go maybe spend a big bag on a stud from another camp and you have a little reputation behind you also, and you can do that. But moral to the story, another biggest mistake is buying a male off the rip. All right, the next biggest mistake. What's up, Foxy Brown? Next biggest mistake is not already having a reproductive team in plan, in order. Um, a reproductive team, that means a reproductive specialist, not just any vet, a reproductive specialist, and one that's busy, hopefully, and one that's personable, hopefully. Um, I don't know if you knew this, but people go to school for four years to be a vet, and only two weeks of that schooling is actually for reproduction. So these vets, if they're not a reproductive vet, they don't know what they're talking about. They'll never tell you that. They'll smile at you, wink with that white coat and their little name tag that's going to make you feel secure, but they really don't know much about reproduction. Then you have reproductive vets, and some of those aren't even that skilled at what they do. There's some amazing ones out there. I'm not knocking all vets. I'm not knocking all vets at all. But I'm saying it's few far in between the good ones. So the good ones, I love y'all and I respect y'all. And I hope you guys find a good one that you respect. Make sure you find a reproductive clinic that earns your respect. Don't just expect them to, to, um, to have, don't just expect them to really want to go out of their way to, to help you get your dog pregnant. Some of them really don't give a shit. They just want the money. So hopefully you find a reproductive team that you trust. Hopefully you find one that answers questions for you and teaches you and is knowledgeable, can help you learn through this process, and, more, and will be there for you when you have questions or when you have a situation. Before you ever decide to breed a dog, make sure you find a reproductive clinic you like and get a good relationship with them. Okay, here we go. Probably one of the biggest myths, one of the biggest mistakes you can make in dog breeding is thinking you're gonna get into breeding dogs and you're gonna sell your puppies for what you see the next people selling their puppies for. Even if your puppy looks like that puppy. I love you, Birkin. I love you, Birkin. Even if your puppy looks like that puppy, it doesn't mean it's worth that amount. I already touched on this a little bit earlier. When you're buying a puppy from a breeder, you're not just buying the dog, but you're buying the knowledge that comes with that dog. First time breeder, like your first, Here's a tip, I'm gonna throw it Bonus tip, before your first litter, when you decide to have your first litter, before you even get the dog pregnant, have homes for that, at least three or four homes. At least have three or four homes already lined up with your friends, your family, whoever you can talk into giving you a few grand for some, for some pups. That's the best way to go into your first litter. Now, have that first litter and don't expect to get the same money that someone else is getting. It just doesn't work that way. There's no, you have no reputation, you have no lines of dogs where they can look and they can see how your dogs look and they know that's how that puppy's gonna grow up because a puppy can look cute and grow up into an ugly dog. That's why you spend a lot of money from a, a respected program on their puppy because you can see what it's gonna grow into and you can lean on that breeder for knowledge when it's needed. So I hope I didn't crush too many dreams today. I hope I didn't offend no one. I'm not trying to offend anybody by saying that it's not for the broke. It's not for the Make week. sure you guys are following me on all my socials, TikTok, Instagram. If you like this video, hit that like button for me. I'd appreciate it. Let me show you what I got going on over here. By the way, welcome to the Bulldog Farm. Wow. All right, so you already see this is a thousand square foot puppy playground I put in. Amazing. This is the first thing I did. I just moved out to this property about six months ago. I call it my Bulldog Farm. I bought it specifically for my bulldogs. Like I said, this is a lifestyle. So when I decided I was really all in, I looked and looked until I found the right property. So I can give these bulldogs the lifestyle that they deserve. Quality of life, health, temperament, safety, security is all number one over here at Big Bone Bulldogs. Over here is my house. Over here is their house. My house, their huge yard their playground, their house. <laughs> All right, we're under construction as you can see still. Bulldog farm is completely fenced in. All the dogs will have restroom access. They all have water access back here. Washer and dryer for all the dog linens and the dog towels. You don't want to wash that shit with your regular laundry. If 
you guys are washing your dog towels and your dog stuff with your regular laundry, you guys are nasty. I hope you're at least going to the laundry night. That shit is nasty. I haven't finished this yet. I don't know if I'm gonna do pavers, rocks, or if I'm gonna just do more cement. I poured all this cement, all this you see here. This is all fresh. This is all fresh. I gotta get my waterfall going, get the lights going. But welcome to the Big Bone Bulldog Farm. And here is where the pups will live, the dogs will live. I got not one, but two two-ton AC units in here. I did poured concrete stalls, 10 stalls for the dogs, all with self-draining. This is a drain that goes here and goes out to my septic, full working kitchen. All the dogs have indoor, outdoor access. Poured concrete stalls, no prefab wire that it's gonna rust. Over here is gonna be a puppy whelping area. I'll have my lab over there. You guys know what to do. Hit that follow button, subscribe, watch me build my bulldog farm. Go watch some of the past videos to see how I got to this point, and I hope to see you guys next time. <laughs>